Today on Open Loops, we have Andrew Kirschbaum, non-duality speaker. Now, uh, I was telling Andrew before we started this, I, I've seen some of his posts, I've read some of the, uh, the, the, the things he's putting out there to the public, but I deliberately did not watch him speak in anything because I... Well, I, I wanted to uh, really understand firsthand. I wanted to encounter the experience of non-duality speech. So, um, I don't know what direction this interview is going to go in, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about a lot of deep, deep things, I believe. Or maybe not deep. We'll find out. Um, Andrew, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yes, I am I am honored to speak with you. Uh Here's my question before we go into this. I mean, are you always speaking non-dual or, or or is that something you turn <laughs> on? What do you, what do you what do you mean by this? So, imagine how you would talk to a 5-year-old about Santa Claus. Do you believe that? No. Right. But you might talk to them that way for the convenience of how it plays out. So in that way, sometimes I will speak dualistically. Actually, all speech is dualistic. All words are concepts that point to a dualistic misunderstanding and all understanding is a misunderstanding and all knowledge is a myth whoa so, okay <laughs> so non-duality speaker is an oxymoron on two levels on one it's because it's it sounds like there's someone speaking about the ultimate nature of reality which ultimately can't be spoken of and on another angle uh this energy system here isn't under the delusion that there's somebody here speaking now and yet it's calling itself a non-duality speaker. <laughs> oh, that that is, yes, that is very, I mean, it's a very humble position, I believe, to take in a lot of ways. Maybe maybe you, you wouldn't put a label like that on it, but um, I know that's what we're doing to try to give people some conceptualization of what's going on here. Uh, tell me this, when did this, you you had an experience, didn't you? Wasn't there there an awakening yeah, story? I had a, yeah, I had a radical shift in perspective, which most people refer to as awakening, enlightenment, or liberation, that occurred four and a half years ago here. Wow. Uh, how does how does that happen for people that want spontaneously? Really? It's, <laughs> uh, yeah. it's an it's a primarily an energetic shift in the feeling tone that oh. lasts at least as long as the remainder of the lifetime. Wow. Now, now I've heard people talk about these spontaneous uh, moments before, but it's always – it's interesting to to get the – I well, there are a lot of seekers for them uh, at certain points in my life. I definitely – I've just been a fan of chasing altered states of consciousness, not necessarily with drugs, but just in general. I love uh, consciousness and altering it. So when people told me about this mythical idea of enlightenment and in high school you read Siddhartha, huh? you think, yeah. oh, it's a thing that happens, and then you experience something amazing and whatnot. Uh, can you can you speak to what that experience is? Is it is it as good as the hype? Uh, it depends on who you're talking to, because some people will put it down like, ah, it's not what it, you know, and some people will really hype it up. So it's somewhere in between. It's very ordinary. It's very down to earth. It's very casual. It's very friendly. It's very intimately you. Oh. But it's not the you you think you are as the seeking ego mind. So right. what, what changes, uh, one way I would put this is uh, seekers and sages both are always constantly projecting at all times, but what is projected is different because what is felt and seen is different. So we are always projecting, all humans are always projecting our energetic, emotional felt state of being, as well as our perspective of self or world, however you want to put it. So what changes is what is felt. Oh, so what is realized allows one to feel a certain way, but it's 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 not something that's known or understood. Yeah, it's often referred to as the piece that surpasses understanding, things like that. The way I would put it is there's five categories of uh, mentation or, or of not mentation. There's five categories of I don't know what you'd call it, but you have belief, understanding, knowing, gnosis and realization. Right. You notice the thumb's a little different than the other fingers, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 
Oh my gosh, you are a wise sage. Holy crap. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> this is this is very interesting. Okay, so <laughs> so <laughs> we got to figure this out here. So gnosis. Uh, uh oh, and realizations the top one. So wait yes, a minute. Did you go? That's right. Now were you going through? Tell me this. Four years ago, if we were to go rewind uh, time, were you already on the path here? Were you studying? Oh yeah, stuff my whole life. You... Okay. Mm -hmm. So just to do a really brief overview, um, when I was eight years old, which is when most people fall out of the awakened state, hmm, right? Um, on average, it's different for everybody. But on average, most humans fall out of the natural state around eight years old. And when I was eight years old, I noticed that um, seeking and suffering and depression had begun. And uh, I was able to articulate it out loud at eight years old. I was able to say, I feel depressed because I feel as though I'm separate from the rest of the universe. It's the loneliest feeling ever. Yes. By the time I was 12, I was actively dedicating the entirety of my life to seeking out and finding enlightenment within this lifetime. Um, by age 16, the Kundalini energy had activated, kicked online, and Siddhis and things started manifesting. By age 24, I had a Kundalini, a spontaneous, full-blown Kundalini awakening into an astral samadhi, which you can view in the Gnosis category. Right. Uh, it was like meeting God. It was like seeing the other side of things, and I conversed with that and learned all kinds of things. Um, now I realize that isn't some separate being. Right, uh, right. It's you. It's me. Um, and then three years after that, I witnessed a, a multidimensional astral geometric shape of light above the head. It was like the energy signature or the, the uh, a light body of some kind. And then five months after that, liberation occurred. And that was oh. four and a half years ago. And that was... Uh, my awakening actually happened on Father's Day of 2017, which was a right. Sunday in the year of the rooster. Oh, my gosh. Just by chance. Just by chance. Now, now, d did your family know? I mean, I'm sure you brought all this stuff up. If you're eight years yeah. old and bringing these things up, they right. might – really be concerned uh most parents <laughs> might uh i mean were sure. were they were they at all had they explored this themselves i mean what what was what was no. the reaction to you this was just a you thing um it's just oh you know i don't know it's like uh, i had um i was very clever still am i guess don't need it though um awakening does not feel like intelligence um i basically had you know, the same seeking energy every ego mind has, but I also had like ADHD or bipolar tendencies. So um, right. it's probably just assumed that, you know, the depression is from uh, bipolar tendencies or something like that. Um, but really it's what everyone goes through. There's this gnawing hole that won't fill itself in the heart of one's being because they assume they're this character and uh, this character seems to be separate. And so they have this felt sense of separation. So I would, I would define the ego as a felt sense of separation. And that delusion, when it ends, suffering ends. And when suffering ends, seeking ends. And what the seeker finds is its own absence. Oh, crap. Ay, 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 ay. You're pulling me in and out of voids and abysses. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, but I We're love We're crossing that. the abyss together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, <laughs> this is fascinating. I mean, uh, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty remarkable to have such an early experience like this. And I always wonder, you know, in, in terms of, well, they talk about how when sometimes – you you have a state like that you have this awakening uh it is very hard to ground yourself again you have to isolate mm -hmm. yourself from people um you you might even lose interest in all uh material right. conversations mm -hmm. or whatnot i mean wh did you yeah. have a period where you where you cut yourself off from others or or where, where do you yes. think you are in that um, trajectory? so yeah so i was uh so I was like hopelessly addicted to Facebook for the past decade, still am, and uh, yes, in a good right. way. And uh, you know, when when awakening first struck, 
I basically left Facebook for two years. So in that way, and I had a huge, you know, network of people that I was talking to all over the world even before this. And so to cut myself off from that, it was a pretty big deal. You know, I, I took a, that was, that was really a big part of my life that I took a break from, you know, uh, I find it harder to read books now. I find it harder to, uh, I was a singer songwriter guitarist, pretty prolific. And uh, now that I don't need that, <laughs> oh, that's it's like, you know, like uh, I had um, tendencies to drink alcohol, smoke pot, chain smoke cigarettes, black coffee. I don't need any of that now. Like I, I can still have that if I want it, right? There's, you're yeah. free, <laughs> but uh, nothing at all n- is needed. It's actually realized that there's no such thing as need. <laughs> oh. Need implies I'm going to die without it. Well, there's no such thing as death. <laughs> what? Now, wait There's a no minute. such thing as life, and yet here we are. Isn't it exquisitely beautiful? This oh, my duality. gosh. Isn't it colorful? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, now, I mean, this is very interesting to be in a place where you 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 live that experience i wonder for yeah uh is that you coming out and coming back to the world when did you decide it was time to come back let's go there yeah it kind of it it does itself in stages so upon awakening what happens is there's the the freshness of the contrast of having suffered and then the ending of having been confused and now this this absolute clarity undeniable clarity and uh there's a phase for most that go through this process that lasts a few weeks sometimes around a month something like that on average i mean i like to call that the non-dual honeymoon phase oh and uh it's 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 um after that phase the the remnants the like 10 percent remnants within the energy body uh, of the, I call it the ghost of Andrew, you know, the ghost of the character, just a little bit of it kind of trickles back in and a little bit of reactivity comes back and a little bit of your, the way I would put it is upon awakening 90% of all trauma, all emotional charge tied to memory, all mental illness, all seeking, all suffering, ends suddenly all at once and all attachment melts away instantly not until then and what what remains there's still this 10 percent of your stuff in your energy body if you will your traumas your activities your whatever your hang-ups if you will 10 percent of that remains and over time you know, first that 10%, at first it's not even there. And then that 10% trickles back in and then it slowly dissolves over time on its own. Um, but yeah, I, I might be getting sidetracked here. I don't want to ramble. So <laughs> no, 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 this is good. This is good. I want to know uh, what was it, what this 10%, what compelled the 10% mm. to come back, um, especially in, and really seem to lean into spreading uh, this, awakening <clears throat> oh sorry this spiritual kind of uh talk yeah i i had always been talking about this very subject as long as i can remember and i just didn't know exactly what i was talking about because i wasn't in that state and i knew that i wasn't right. under the assumption at oh i'm enlightened and i don't talk about um i wasn't under that assumption prior to awakening and upon awakening i'm not under the assumption that there's somebody here that can claim anything or be anything and uh, which is pretty liberating and uh it is it's the end of identity the enlightenment is the of end identity. of identification. Interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, it's... I I do wonder about how that works in this modern world. I really do. I mean, I think you're doing... Uh, by, by putting yourself out there with this, uh, you know, the smoke screen, if you will, which... Yeah, wait, if that's not a metaphor for life, what is? Uh, non-duality speaker, in parentheses, calling yourself this, uh, is a way for all of us to at least have some semblance of what you represent. But I also imagine, I mean, it is. does the metaverse support the enlightened? Will it? Can it? 
Mm-hmm. Do you, or do you do you think we for for people that are waking up, are we going to have to just shatter everything that we have and build a new society and new institutions and structures for us to be able to communicate in this higher place? I mean, I'm it, curious. it's it's yeah, it's always already happening. So, oh, this is it happening. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so we're in the midst of that which we seek. <laughs> at all times <laughs> really but, you know I mean, that's a pretty optimistic view because some people everything say... is destroying and creating itself at the same time you know it's like the phoenix every moment right it's always fresh and um i think it's becoming more and more not mainstream but it's it's not quite as elusive as it used to be like i what i'm doing is simply trying to make myself available as an interface an impersonal interface to clarity to be used so um yeah i'm just trying to make myself available on as many platforms as possible so it started off on facebook um writing you know messaging being in groups and then i expanded into doing talks and i've recorded probably approaching 200 talks uh, since march recorded wow. hour to hour talks um and i've put probably about 30 of them on youtube so far i'm, I'm gonna be publishing you know at least 90 percent of them eventually what happens in those talks is that just you quote unquote channeling or or what what, what would you say how do those talks get formed so they're spontaneous arisings and there it's kind of a combination of energetic transmission, silent transmission, and clarity through word concepts hmm. all wrapped into one. So there's an energetic transmission uh, behind my voice right now, for example. It's very subtle that some detect. And after uh, a talk right. with me, people tend to be smiling and full of energy and bliss. And, uh, you know, um, this is an empowering, relieving message. Um, there's no way you could ever make the wrong choice. There's nothing you're responsible for, good or bad. There's nothing that really matters, which is actually liberating if you can hear it from the right angle. And the message can sound very dark and spooky to the mind because it's negating it. And what it is, is the primary delusion, this felt sense of separation, when in fact, there is no separation. I am you. Yo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you you definitely the bliss comes through. Now I know that I well, <laughs> I, I I believe your testimonials. I mean, I know that I'm naturally someone that uh well, I I went to school to study acting, so I know that I can definitely feel the transmission and receive it whenever people come on i i really reflect their energy. Mm. So, so that's just something that I naturally have but yeah. um i i do wonder you know what yeah what does happen does everybody when people talk to andrew kirschbaum uh you know people in the worst moods their job is <laughs> terrible they they hate yeah. their parents you know what 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 do you think is going on there that you're able to bring them to bliss are you always energy able? it's energy and clarity and empowerment wow I mean, what if I were to say, hey, look, hmm? I uh, – my my relationship with my parents stresses me out. They're on me too much about work, um, and, and I should be making more money, and I should be married at this point. Um, should, 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 yeah. Yeah, what would you, you – would, yeah, you would just laugh at the shoulds? <laughs> I would shrug them off. You know, the word shoulders is spelled shoulders, you know. I don't know. I'd shrug it off. It's what everyone should do, right? It's uh, There's these contractions in the energy body, uh, in, in the beliefs, concepts that people have, which are based primarily on delusion, uh, which they don't want to hear necessarily. But, uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of adult humans are insane. They're deluded. They're, they're suffering. Yes. <laughs> yes. An awakening is sanity. It's clarity. It's the dawning of clarity. There's an undeniable clarity here. There's an undeniable charge here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah are you are you like this in uh daily life too i mean you go into you know a restaurant with a waiter do you do you do they feel the bliss 
Um, it's, it's more concentrated in these talks, like a laser beam, because it's not necessarily, um, the, how do you navigate a world of insanity with mm. sanity? Yeah. So, uh, it's concentrated and focused in these talks and it's, um, amplified in magnitude in these talks. These talks are in a way my practice. Uh, so when you're out and about in the dualistic world, chatting up the cashier at Target, can they yeah. tell? I mean, they could probably sense that there's something different. And that's about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very, uh, it's very hypnotic. One of the great principles of being a hypnotist is you have to go there first. Uh -huh. um, and the idea, of, or and even, yeah, be the change in the world you want to see. Um, you know, the idea of that relating to interpersonal communication uh -huh. um, is, well... I don't think it's something people think about enough. I mean, it would be interesting if everybody just came from this blissful place of clarity and sanity. Um, Probably be kind of boring. Yeah, that's like <laughs> that's the thing. Would it be? But but would it be interesting? You're right. You you're see, right. from from the awakened perspective, uh, the sage doesn't want to change the world. It's absolutely perfect as it is. Every moment of it is absolutely exquisitely beautiful. Every little thing is paradise. And the seeker doesn't want to hear this because their world is on fire and there's human trafficking and war and torture. And yes. how could the sage possibly be right that it's perfect? Maybe the sage is right. No, that's not a sage. You're seeing the world upside down. Oh. So what happens is the seeker sees the world upside down. It's the, it's the wrong view, if you will. And it, it's the same world. <laughs> it's yeah. the same dream of separation, even though there isn't any. And yet, upon awakening, that samsara turns into nirvana. It's the same world seen right side up. It's been this way all along. Little kids don't have a problem with the world. Unless there's something horrifically going wrong, if it's just every day, they're uh, they're joyous. Like, why? Because they're in the awakened state, just like your cat, your dog, your three-year-old, and only 0.1 percent of adult humans. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so you're telling me that it would be pretty boring if everybody was awakened, uh, uh -huh. but isn't that? I nope. mean. <laughs> no, it's not the point. The point is to enjoy. <laughs> well, the point's to enjoy, uh, but, but, but but my idea is that yes, it's easier um, to enjoy after for most. <laughs> right, right. Why not? Ri I mean, yeah. I, it, could someone that's the one percent of the richest people say? Well, no, of course. It's better to be at the top. It's better to – it's much more interesting to have more money than everyone else because if everybody did, then this money would not be special. Well, you know, most people that have an insane amount of money are profoundly miserable. That's true, too. And the reason for that <laughs> is because they've realized much sooner that that's not it, that that doesn't give you that feeling that you've been seeking since your earliest memories. Um, that this can't be purchased, that nine mansions and $50 billion and 17 wives can't touch this, that nothing of this world or in this world can ever fulfill or satisfy the ego mind. It is not of the nature of the ego mind to be satisfied. And so awakening yeah. is the falling away of that dissatisfaction. And you're only left with what is the case, truly. Right. That makes sense. I'm just wondering this this whole idea of uh I mean is that are you sure it's not an egoic judgment? <laughs> to say that it would be boring if everybody was awakened. The egoic judgment. Um, let me put it this way. What's your favorite video game? Is it uh, a peaceful paradise, everything's perfect type game? I bet you a million dollars it isn't. <laughs> let me guess. It's some kind of post-apocalyptic war based, you see what I'm saying? Survival simulation. Well, that's what this is. I quite enjoy this game because it's not real. But is it because, is it, but is that coming from the 10% or the 90%? Pardon? The, the ten, is that coming from Ghost Andrew or Awakened Andrew? Because There is no Andrew. At no point is Andrew awakened. It's not the character that wakes up. 
It's the background, pristine, non-dual awareness that we all share that wakes up to itself. So there is no delusion here thinking that it's Andrew speaking, for example. So wait a minute. <laughs> I knew this was going to get interesting. Okay, okay. But what about – I just want to really understand this. Oh, of course That's I do. That's the problem. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. You're right. I know. I set myself up for that. Uh, no, no. Um, well, what I mm, mm, I know this is what you do. You, this is you the put, piece that surpasses understanding. This is beautiful. You're putting See, in the Coens, and, and I. This is great. The seeker, the seeker, desperately wants to know and understand more, because it assumes wrongly that somehow that'll lead to it feeling well. Oh, that's true. Yeah, what do you think? Should I? I have all these books. Should I burn them? But I love all. But I love the knowledge. What'd you do with your baby toys when you're done with them? Did you burn them? Not you don't even know where they are. They don't even matter anymore, do they? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's true. When you outgrow something, you outgrow it. Not until then. And uh, there's nothing wrong with books, but you won't find enlightenment in there. That's not to say you can't wake up from reading a book some sage has written or something. That happens sometimes. But this is, uh, as Zen would say, this is a special transmission outside of the scriptures. In other words, this is utterly beyond language. And so the main thing happening in, in my talks is a transmission of energy, clarity, and stillness. Even though there's this manic, chatty guy throwing all these words around. <laughs> <laughs> but okay okay i know i'm so set on you calling an awakened world boring i'm just zoned <laughs> in on that because i'm going what well what here's is... the thing here's the main thing right the seeker thinks well if ba 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 then ba 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 no it's already perfect so does the world need everyone to be awake well the world is composed of liberation the world is already composed entirely of freedom you already are enlightenment do you need it no do you need to know about it no do you even need to realize it no <laughs> you are <laughs> it <laughs> you are the truth you've been seeking you are the light of this world that's what jesus meant to say because he was a non-duality speaker so they killed him but you know uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> wow wow <laughs> people do say that jesus is uh well i mean he's certainly more of a hippie Wink. than a lot of yeah yeah he's he's definitely tapped into something more than a lot of other figures in the bible um now son of god i mean aren't we all they're not even son of the father and i am one that's what's so beautiful you know the awakening here happened on father's day i was this hyper buddhist guy and i'm having judeo-christian synchronicities it's hilarious oh that is weird <laughs> <laughs> wasn't on the Buddha's birthday or anything in heaven. No, no. It was on Father's Day. Father and I am one. It was on a Sunday in the year of the rooster. Rooster is always a symbol of awakening and Jesus and Lucifer all at the same time. It's the break of dawn, the dawning of clarity, the dawning of this light that you are. <laughs> so you hold all that, those, synchronicity, those synchronicities are significant to you. Yes, there's two sides to that, right? Like one side wants to say that's the ego mind projecting meaning where it actually doesn't belong, trying to connect concepts that don't belong, right. trying to find meaning where there isn't any, and that's true. However, if you have a deep enough series of these synchronicities that are not simply the mind doing that, then there's uh, no doubt. Like there's only a divine timing. So what what is actually happening in those moments of synchronicity um, is the awareness has increased beyond its regular threshold. So it starts to see what's already always happening. In other words, the whole world is always divinely scripted and timed perfectly every moment. And if your awareness increases for a little bit, you might get a glimpse of that for a moment. Oh, wow. But if you have a hundred of those a day, it's no longer, oh, wow. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? right. It's like, I made toast today. It's like, yeah. Yeah, but you don't understand. I have a toaster and it plugs into the wall. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, but it's electric. It's an electric toaster that cooks bread. And you're like, yeah, we all have one. Yeah, I understand. Uh, uh, you know? Do you, do, is there that more, mind blowing anymore? Is there more mind blowing this for you? <laughs> is there more enlightenment for Andrew? Um, so it, it's a never ending falling into itself. So more and more liberation every day, more and more clarity every day, more and more ease and. Um, certain things return that I didn't know would return. And uh, one of those is like excitement. You know, I thought excitement died. 
upon awakening oh. because it's so neutral, so calm that uh, I assumed I'd just be the old man on the park bench at the amusement park from now on. Yes. And now, now I find myself in line to get on the roller coaster again. You know, oh, that's great. And I didn't expect that. So, yes, there is a, a type of to return to the question I accidentally neglected earlier. There is a full circle return <laughs> oh. of the personal, of the dualistic, of everything, right? So non-duality includes duality. Right. It's the infinitely open-ended ultimate umbrella term. And it includes everything, including exclusion. Oh boy. So non-duality includes duality. So the world the seeker is trying to change or escape from, the sage quite enjoys as absolute perfection, paradise, as it is, as it is, as you are. <laughs> <laughs> I've always, you know, I've always thought the words duality and not, I've always been annoyed that non-duality, we have to use the non to explain what it is. I'm going, <laughs> wait, why can't That's how words work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what what is that? Wait, why why can't we come up with another word for what this? Is? I mean, I guess that's you could... what the seeking mind likes to say. Another another way the seeking mind would rephrase this if it was feeling bold, is it would say, "Okay, Mister Non Duality Speaker, uh, can't you phrase this just a little bit clearer so that I can understand <laughs> this? I think you might have missed one word. Like, isn't there just one slightly better word you could have used to? No, the ultimate. You see, the structure of language is inherently dualistic and conceptual yes. yes so the only thing we have when using word concepts is is dualistic mm. uh, so that's why silent transmission sometimes or energetic transmission may be more helpful because this is utterly beyond words this is utterly beyond concepts this is a pre-verbal pre-conceptual awareness it isn't thinking it isn't it isn't even consciousness, it's awareness. It's, oh. it's this background, pristine witness. There's no interpretation. There's just the clarity of, of witnessing. What exactly is, 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 is anything in your, in your head right now? Are there, are there any concepts or are you just- It's not even my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. There is no my. <laughs> I'm just wondering, you know, what, it, what? Yeah, what is the neurological experience uh -huh. of the neurological I, experience within the brain is a calming down of the network patterns that relate to the emergence of the delusion of a separate self. <laughs> so all that shit, the prefrontal neocortex, etc., it calms down. It's the opposite of a seizure. Instead of a runaway freight train of activity, it calms down. The dust settles. The ripples settle. And there's only non-dual pristine awareness what you really are hmm. which is eternal yeah infinite it's clear great. loving spacious vast impersonal <laughs> now look you're not yeah you're, you're what's great about you is that you're not a uh i mean look awakening i'm sure can happen at three years old really i mean it, people are there already um, i have but... i have one friend that um never experienced unawakening so they were born awake and are still awake and they're the only person like that i've ever met i have another close friend who woke up at eight years old you know the same age i had the unawakening they had the awakening so they must have suffered for you know a year or less or days or months or whatever you know what i mean so yeah it can happen at any age the average age for awakening is around 50 uh in this story here it happened at 27 yeah what is this i mean that's pretty interesting i uh you you do do people go what is this guy talking about this of course this, this man is smoking drugs one of, my, one of my i i posted i think it was yesterday i posted what the hell am i rambling on about this time <laughs> right <laughs> right <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, yeah, you're right. It does tend to happen a little later in life for a lot of people. For most, if it happens. About one in a thousand, it'll happen. And of those, the average age is about 50. You know, and in the average lifetime, maybe the last three seconds of your life, you'll be in that state. Oh, my First gosh. seven or eight years in the last three seconds, on average. It's a very tenacious, energetic pattern. It's a very stubborn, clever 
the beyond, beyond bliss, what are the benefits of the state? Well, what, why would somebody want to really go into the non-dual? Well, do you want to end suffering or not? <laughs> right? That's yeah, the that's litmus test. Idea. Are you still suffering? Well, yeah, well, then. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. It's a pretty big deal, isn't it? People, people do everything in this world to uh, not suffer, to end the seeking, to end the suffering. And this is the end of seeking and suffering. Wow. Also wow. the end of you, the end of everything you think is yours. It's the end of everything you've ever known. It's the end of, it's the stripping away of what you think you have. It's losing everything. It's exactly like death. It's not a near death experience. Mm. It's a death, non experience. It's, um, Is it different than you... ego death? Ego death seems like it's, it's permanent specific. ego death. Oh, it's but in a functional way. Like yeah. I'm not like debilitated and in a coma right now. I'm very hyper functional. Yeah. So right. It's it's permanent. It's not even. It, it feels like death to the ego. It feels exactly like that. In fact, it feels like attending your own funeral and mourning and grieving for the death of that character kind of like if you had a twin brother but much closer yeah mm. and um it's also on the flip side it's it's like the best birthday party you never had like the ultimate birthday party that no one ever actually gets yeah right. you actually get it but you're at your own funeral while you get it so there's confetti in the air at your own funeral and you feel just fine <laughs> is there so you're telling me that there because i did i asked this question way back to uh, the Facebook community. I was curious what they'd say. And I said, spiritual awakening, uh, joyful experience or most painful experience? Both. And a lot of people were divided. Yeah, but it's neutral. It's neutral. Like, like it, there's, there's, there's three or more common reactions to awakening. The most, the two most common actually didn't happen to me. The, uh, so there's a third option here. Usually you hear about this in Zen or other traditions talking about this as, you know, people just ah, crack up laughing like it's fucking hysterical or right. they just break down and weep and weep and weep. Yes. And for me, there was no reaction. It was just utterly, utterly calm and neutral and, and um, unsurprising and ordinary. And um, there wasn't a reaction here. There was just total, totally calm, total neutrality. Wow. Now, if you, if you, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, the reason it's, you know, as Jesus would say, it's harder for a rich man to get into heaven. It's like a camel passing through the eye of a needle. What he meant there was everything is taken from you. And then you become all or nothing or one. It's all the same. But there are mm. levels to this, you know, and, and, uh, a fleeting feeling of oneness on the peak of an acid trip that's not it you know that's a that's a glimpse of it and that's beautiful but that's not you don't bring it back with you when the trip ends or if you get zapped with kundalini by some shakti master like myself or others that can do that um it's probably a fleeting glimpse like you oh wow i finally have it they're right this oh i love oh fuck oh man yeah. i'm even more yeah. frustrated than before i so that's why I try to do a more subtle transmission most of the time, just because it's more gradual and semi-permanent. It's like a subtle on-ramp, you know? But um, I forget what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what you're talking about, the joy, the joy versus the pain of awakening. Yeah, if, if somebody had a machine and they could hook me up to this machine and some multi-billionaire up to this machine, and I would be given $50 billion and my enlightenment would be transferred to them, uh, I would not consider that a fair deal. I would, I would decline. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Because there's nothing in this world like this feeling. This is not something that can be purchased or found in the world or of the world. This, is, this, this alone is unique and unlike anything else. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, you mentioned that you, you, you are, as you're connecting with others, you're slowly transferring this energy in a way that keeps it going. Is that, am I changing right now as I'm having this interview with you? Am I going to walk away through this and be further on the journey of enlightenment? To be quite blunt about it, it'll speed it up. It'll catalyze it at least a little bit. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> is there – now, can we, can we break down why that is? Is there – Energy. Is it, it's just energy. I mean, there's a lot there. Primarily, though, fundamentally, if I'm being direct and honest with you, it's energy. Um, it's also the rewiring of the neural networks. It's also mirror neuron activity of my body language and the emptiness that can be detected by your energy body and subconscious mind and your mirror neurons, and your neural patterns. I'm actually also shutting down certain neural patterns of delusion that lead to suffering. And so uh, a little more bliss than normal will We'll be there with you after this call ends, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I, I definitely am experiencing. I, I definitely feel very tapped into you, very present, very. Yes. Yeah. What, what is going on there? I mean, is this? Is, are you the greatest hypnotist ever? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's actually dehypnosis. So the seeker is in the state of hypnosis. It has yes. fallen into a slumber. And that's why this is called awakening. In hypnosis, we call it somnambulance, which is that. Yes that state of being asleep or sleepy. And this is why this is called awakening. It's the dehypnosis, the disillusionment. It's seeing through the magic trick in a way that you can't unsee. Now that you know how the trick is done, you can't ever be tricked again. You can't be the hooks of the delusion of the ego mind, the seeking energy. What is the ego mind? It's seeking energy. It's the seeking energy that does. So there's these patterns of selfing in the energy body and in the brain, in the neural networks, in the cellular uh, memory. And the 90% of all of those energetic impressions are wiped clean upon enlightenment. And so that remaining 10% uh, is manageable. <laughs> it doesn't even need to go away. It's just, yeah. it's whatever. It might dissolve, might not, it doesn't really matter because it's so manageable, it's so effortless now, which is very radically different from the state of suffering intensely for many, many, many years. And so it's remarkable, it's worth talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> worth sharing. I mean, this is beautiful. By the way, if you are listening out there, uh, Andrew does do these. He does coaching sessions and also uh, will just sit down with you and, and have a non-dual talk. So this is something that is available if you want to experience this bliss. You're probably already experiencing this if you're listening right now. <laughs> um, but, I, yeah, I mean, I am so intrigued by, well, at least uh, – when do, when do you think, hmm, just this this way that you can now look at the world and its constructions and really see that um, it is all an illusion. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is something I've read in books for years. It's something that I've had people speak about. And yet, I don't know. I probably could fudge a version of mm -hmm. non-dual speaking if someone gave me money i could probably pretend be to be actor. enlightened yeah yes probably now here's the problem with that i i'm one of the few people that will call out people doing that publicly <laughs> oh, who is doing that publicly I could, is, I, mean, I don't want to get into it necessarily but you is know jim I mean? carrey Cause... enlightened let's yes. hear it right now jim carrey yes, you is. believe is yes i know he is eckhart tolle yeah, that's how Jim Carrey woke up. He hung around Jeff Foster and Eckhart, who were in this state, and now he's in this state. Yes. Wow, but there are people out there that aren't. Well, well tell me, you don't have to name names, though. You can. I mean, if you say the name, I'll tell you whether they are or aren't. Oh, what kind of a game But I'm is not going to bring out a name. You know what I mean? Deepak Chopra. Uh... I don't Hard think he to is. Say. I don't think I, he Probably is. not. Hard to say. I don't want to shit on anybody. You know what I mean? I don't want to be like, oh... <laughs> But at the same time, I'll, I'll either say yes, no, I'll, I'll tell you my confidence level, you know what I mean, in the, in the response, but probably not, you know. Did you, do, you, do you know David Hawkins, his work? Sounds vaguely familiar. He was the power versus force guy. I feel, I feel uh, he, 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 kinesthesiology has the whole ranking of consciousness. He, he put numbers to consciousness like uh, – you should look into that. I'd be curious what your thoughts on this are, actually. Uh, like, th there's a map of consciousness, and m he says most of the world is below a certain threshold, below 200, and and that's where pain is. Oh, that like. fucking guy. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, what do you think's up with that I, guy? I, I get quite irritated by his book because 
I'll get people that message me things like, well, you know, Andrew, you're at a 700, but I'm at a thousand. Oh, you know? gosh. And, and I'll, I'll know for sure they haven't even experienced what I'm talking about yet. I'll say, listen, I'm open minded to the idea that you're more enlightened than I am and that it keeps going. However, if that was the case, wouldn't you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, it's like, wouldn't wouldn't you remember this stage? Because I remember all the stages that led to this one. I can speak about what it was like. How come you don't know what I'm talking about when I say there's no one here? Oh, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. So if, if they can't tell me, you know, if they, if they don't know what I'm even talking about, then how could they have gone past it? Yeah. That's a good point. If yeah, I say, do you, do you remember that? being five years old and believing in Santa Claus? You say, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> then do you know what I mean? It's so, so yeah, I get that sometimes people will, they'll think they're enlightened <laughs> and you know, there's nobody, there's no such thing as an enlightened person. <laughs> it doesn't, it's right. not the persona that awakens. There isn't somebody here named Andrew that's enlightened. That's not the case. At no point is the character enlightened. The character is the delusion. Right. So upon enlightenment, there isn't anyone here. It's impersonal awareness running the show yes yes so wait is uh impersonal awareness does that mean that the universe is intelligent mm -hmm. yeah the universe is composed of the infinite attentional awareness of what most people would call god even though that gives the wrong idea because then if i say the word god you're gonna say okay yeah there's a self me and then there's god this separate being that's higher than me no like there's no you and there's no god there's just this and mm. this isn't someone this isn't a person this is vast spacious impersonal awareness and it's it's in the same way that empty space is charged with energy that energy kind of just leaks out and generates universes and uh it's all dream uh, they're actually so what composes the universe is a form of white light or a form of um, infinite electrical energy that we would call kundalini or we would call the clear light or it goes by many names and and that is the movement of awareness that's the the activity of or the, the rippling nature of awareness through awareness. And so that's why light moves quickly. That's why lightning moves quickly, because this is awareness moving through itself as itself that generates yeah. what we call energy. And then what we know of as the world and all experience is composed of that energy. So the koan I have for you then would be, how much energy exists within a dream? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> golly. I'm sorry. No, it's beautiful. No, keep them coming. You don't keep have to coming. answer it. It's just the question. It's okay. <laughs> keep them coming. Keep them coming. Uh, no, I love this stuff. I love it. I, 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 I'm I, always looking to have my mind blown. This has certainly happened a lot of times so far tonight. Uh, yeah. My gosh. Wait a sec. There's something else I was going to ask you, but now my brain is twisty. Uh, oh, what does this mean then about <laughs> I completely forget. <laughs> I completely forget what I was gonna ask you. Wow, this is words don't this mean anything. A... There's no see now does this happen a lot? People must just uh, do you just put people into these do you have you ever said anything <laughs> that has made someone just I think I'm awakened now? Yes. Really? Yes. <gasps> wow. Do people have to pay extra for that? <laughs> Actually, I think I did that one for free. <laughs> oh my ironic, gosh. I, ha I have a buddy that does something similar, and uh, he woke somebody up, and the guy gifted him 10 grand. I wasn't, I wasn't quite that lucky on the financial side of it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was some rich guy, and he, he woke up, and he's like, oh, let me give you 10 grand. I'm like, oh, well, that must be nice. <laughs> but no, I, I, have had, I have had people wake up through talking with me, and... Um, I've definitely seen even talk to talk how how um, radically catalyzing uh, it can be for the trajectory of their life story. Even um, it, it's simply inhabiting a different vibe, and that vibe is 
you know, a wild, uh, free, uh, empowered frequency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, after we we get off this call, I'm wondering what am I going to do with this? I mean, yeah. See, there's the seeker again. There's the seeker. But, you have to but schedule another talk. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or how do I? Where, where do I? Do I study this more? Do I learn more about the illusion that is everything? I mean, what what is? I mean, I do offer my YouTube channel for free. It has over thirty or forty hours worth of content right now. I'll be uploading content all the time and uh yeah i mean that side of it's free and a lot of people will find me on youtube and then sign up to do a talk with me i i tend to do a suggested donation of about 50 dollars an hour for when i do anything really um whether it's empowerment life coaching or non-duality talks you know trying to awaken or receiving energetic transmissions things like that and, you know, as like a day job to like pay the bills and stuff. I also yeah. make websites, if, you know, if anybody wants a professional grade website, I do that too. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, we're going to, we're going to link to uh, your YouTube page as well as your Facebook page where people can see a lot of what's Appreciate going that. on. Uh, the other thing is this, you, you started this movement. It looks like I know there's a Facebook group, <laughs> this movement of pirates. Can you talk a little bit about that? The non-dual. <laughs> yeah, pirates. absolutely. Yeah. So I, I created a secret, a private group rather that uh, it's called uh, non-duality pirate rogues. Now what that came from was um, I was uh, kind of bumping elbows with the radical non-duality community which is um what is that tell me about that community <laughs> so radical non-duality is something that was repackaged into a certain type of expression in 1995 and it's a very clear direct way of pointing to this but most people don't like it <laughs> <laughs> and people can get stuck in the concepts of it if they if they're viewing it from the wrong angle and so even non-duality can become a type of trap it's like magnetic quicksand you can get stuck in it and yeah. so you're stuck in duality then you can get stuck in non-duality and so this is like a further uh deepening of liberation in a way that you know you're free to anything you know, it's like, there's no rules. There's, so I saw a bunch of these uh, non-duality, radical non-duality groups that are very, you know, dogmatic and rigid in certain structures with their rules. And, and I thought, well, this is the opposite of uh, what I'm trying to express, you know? So I wanted to create a group that was something between like regular satsang and like a bar fight. <laughs> You know, it's like <laughs> it's like the it's like the Wild West meets pirates meets soft spoken satsang. You know, it's yeah, like because in I, I, I'm in there. I see people post stuff. I'm going. I have no idea what this has to do with spirituality. Maybe that's the point, <laughs> though. Is right, this is exactly. this absurdist yeah. or is it uh -huh. spiritual? Yeah. I'm not sure. It's, it's yeah, and it's even like intentionally juvenile on a certain level. Yeah, because it's. It's wild. It's like a three-year-old running around the yard screaming its head off. It's like that. Because that's the awakened state. That's a sage. You know, a sage is a wild animal. Hmm. And so I didn't want to get sucked into just radical non-duality because my message is a lot more than that. You know, radical non-duality tends to look down upon synchronicity or kundalini or astral samadhi type states. Because people have had this liberation experience, they've had this shift in perspective, but maybe not any of that other stuff. And so they throw the baby out with the bathwater and they say, oh, that's just the delusions of the seeking mind generated, you know, project. No, it's not, you know, it's not. And uh, so that's what I, that's why I came into the picture. I feel like I had something to say. I feel like the community needed clarification on certain things and how these things connect. Now be Kundalini, sorcery, Siddhi, synchronistic stuff, the energetic with shamanism, the entheogenic and the preverbal awareness and enlightenment. And those three things in my story go hand in hand. So even though they're separate domains of inquiry, they, they're linked in a way. Yeah. And I wanted to do something that fully acknowledged the power of radical non-duality, which is kind of like having a gun in your back pocket. Like it's powerful, 
But do you really need it right now for this at all times? Like you don't just wave it around, point it at everybody. It's a very <laughs> powerful thing to have if you need it. It's it's the most direct, clear expression. But if that's all you're doing, uh, you're missing out on a lot of other stuff, a lot of other layers of, of ways you could connect with people and, and, and help alleviate suffering and increase bliss and help them feel empowered. And you could say I'm, some people say I'm a bodhisattva, um, others would say I'm a recovering rescuer, you know, because the victim, the bully and the rescuer are like the drama triangle, you know, and on a certain mm. level, nobody needs saving. Nobody right. needs liberating because there's only liberation. However, those that resonate with me who've had enough of suffering seeking, they finally really had enough. And they really do want to take that final step, that final inquiry. They tend to come to me. And those that come to me tend to be born shamans. They tend to be born sorcerers. And they tend to be born with the wiring required to awaken <laughs> oh yeah yeah you heard him out there listeners sound familiar no. <laughs> <laughs> he said some good stuff to me right there yes um no no uh look i mean i i well i guess i i appreciate that non-intentional intentional compliment i'm not even sure and also those of you listening that's to you too i mean you're, you're listening to this podcast um actually well tell me this do you think, yeah, you said the world is working as it is. Could you make an argument then that everybody listening to this right now in some way has shamanistic powers because they are listening to you speak versus some other podcast? Usually. I mean, if they resonate with me, they probably do so because they have, again, the people that come to me and keep coming to me, they tend to have all three of them. I mean, everyone does, right? This is right, this is right. what is shared. Everyone has this. Like everyone that goes deep into shamanism, like, oh, Oh my God, I got to share this with the world. Everyone that goes deep into sorcery, they're probably quiet about it, but they do want to share their experiences, even though it's taboo to talk about these really grandiose mystical states and, you know, uh, <laughs> cities, supernatural power. It's very taboo to talk about because it's distracting and it's not the point. However, <laughs> I'm quite open to that. And, you know, liberation itself, it's all goes hand in hand. These are all things, all three of these things are something that when you finally discover them deeply, it's so fucking powerful that you want to tell mm. everybody about it. And yeah. even if people won't listen, it doesn't matter because there's an audience and that audience is based on an algorithm. Thank God, the holy algorithm. And it's uniting people. <laughs> the holy algorithm. I love that. <laughs> yeah. The holy... You might not be able to do this at Target off the cuff, but you can do this online all day long. <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And I I wonder about uh, the way you, you spoke about being open to these other kinds of mystical experiences. I do think, speaking back to those radical non-dualists, that there is a – there definitely is a discrimination against – I, I suppose the uh, Ken Wilber would call it the realm of the transpersonal, um, somewhere in there. Right. The, this idea of once you start getting into spirits and and ghosts and and perhaps occult magic, Alistair Crowley, all this yep. stuff. Um, yep. And I've always gone, well, I. But that's that stuff seems kind of cool too. Why? Yeah. Just, right. Um. Yeah. All, all the interesting rabbit holes, even though they're reality tunnels, even though they're kind of dualistic. Uh, it's still fun even now like I'm not gonna I don't know I, I guess I wouldn't say I made a choice it's just of my nature to be bold and radically honest and and just you know um, wild and so trying to shove something into a cookie cutter McMold or trying right. to oh we have a hundred radical non-duality speakers and they're all saying the same thing and they're all they're all trying to negate certain things and it's like I wanted to do something that fully honored the potency and relevance of that but kept going like didn't get stuck in that you know and so i had a handful of close friends that were like me and i started joking around and i said you know you know we, we're we were in that but we took it a little further and we, we we aren't confined to that particular expression and yet we yeah. honor it and yet we we're not confined to it and so I started jokingly calling us pirate rogues, non-dual non pirate rogues. It was like a joke right. me and my like five closest friends type of deal. 
And then um, people were basically begging me to create a Facebook group for a couple of years. And then just out of the blue, when I had that little extra mini awakening after my awakening, I had a falling away of that remaining 10%, if you will. And that was like two and a half weeks ago or something. Oh my gosh. What, what does <laughs> yeah. that mean now? What is that? <laughs> Four and a half years after awakening. And then finally that last 10% just melted away. And uh, of, of the, the trauma and things, you know, and yeah. something in me felt even more liberated, like being given wings, it felt like. And, and um, in like a day or two after that, I, I was like, you know, I think it's about time to start that group. And I, I started the group and didn't like a, <laughs> It, people joined like like hotcakes even though it's a private secret group i invited certain people and it's been i don't know two two weeks something like that maybe a little longer than that and it has over 560 members now yeah what what do you think it, i mean with all these abstract absurdist posts at times mm -hmm. wh why are uh why are people drawn to this what do you think it is it's it's the the liberation from the stale, cold, sterile, uh, stagnant misunderstanding of radical non-duality. So people that misunderstand non-duality will get the wrong idea from certain expressions of it. So this is a this is like a refreshing of that. It's still honoring it. It's still including it. It's still an integral part of what's being expressed here. It's just not limited to it or anything else. And so it's. And a lot of these groups is taken very seriously. <laughs> yeah. So this one isn't, you know what I mean? It's like a, it's like a healing from the traumas of the spiritual communities we find ourselves in. And it's not taking itself too seriously. There isn't uh, an overly serious hierarchy. There isn't any, you know what I mean? It's, um, it's a playground. It's recess. It's it's a bar fight. It's uh, yes. uncharted waters. It's uh, pushing the frontier. It's, it's it's the cutting edge of creating that that spiritual community that you were wondering when it would start. Well, this this is you know, it's already happening. Everything's already. Uh, there's a few of us on the cutting edge of of not exploring this, but generating this, and instead of finding an expression of this, it's being expressed, you know? And um, we are the expressions, all of us. We aren't here to express, we are here to be the expressed. So we aren't living lives, we're being lived as life, as the dream of life, as aliveness. And what that aliveness is, it's energetic. And so it's ultimately, aware. I, you know, I, I think this is uh, really a, a radical message and, uh, well, but a non-radical message. It's a pirate's message. Um, <laughs> yeah, a pirate yes, rogue. Yes. Yeah. It's a pirate rogue message for the people. Um, and... Part of it, too, the rogue part of it is it's also like, it's like, I'm on my own. I don't, I don't fit into any community. Like, yeah, exactly. You fit right in my community because none of us, that's the point, right? It's like. You want to be the outsider. You want to be the one who's like, no, I'm on my own. Like, I'm not, I don't actually fit into any of these. Uh, no, you can't contain them. Yeah, exactly. That's how you fit in. It's, like, <laughs> it's ironic because uh -huh. the, the way I first started putting it was, say, uh, you know, a fleet of pirate rogues. Like, it doesn't make any sense because it's like a group uh -huh. for loners, a group for lone wolves. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. And yet there's something refreshing about that because it's not trying to force anybody into anything it's just free it's just a demonstration of total utter freedom and clarity i have to ask you one more thing before before we really tie this together which is and it, it's a loaded question in some ways oh, good. maybe maybe you have a simple answer um probably uh when people come to you for empowerment coaching or people come to you and and even just trying to make sense of make sense of this stuff in <laughs> in their their understanding of the world, they're definitely seeing Or their misunderstanding. Of yes, them. right, right. There are still like you mentioned, you do website design. Mm -hmm. People have to pay the bills. Yep. People and, and there's in this idea of not even well, okay. Certainly entrepreneurialism these days mm -hmm. is equated with 
some kind of personal transformation, self-development, the idea of becoming yeah. a one-shop, one-stop shop business person that uh-huh. can generate money, that can survive resources, and quote-unquote succeeding in that. Mm-hmm. Um, how does how does this way of living reflect evolving in a way that actually suits living on this planet? Yeah, so so from a non-dual perspective, there's no such thing as success or failure or anyone right. to have it. And uh, so that is to say, you're not responsible for your actions. They're just happening. So whether you feed 3,000 orphans or murder 12 people, either way, you didn't do anything. So there's no pride right. or shame to be had in the awakened state because it's simply happening. And um, so all shame, guilt, embarrassment, fear melts away. And what's left is unconditional love and clarity. And how that relates into doing business and things. uh, I, in my case, I'm particularly fortunate to have people that, you know, like people won't know that I do websites. They'll know I'm a speaker and they'll, Oh, you do websites? Oh, I'll definitely go with you. If you do websites, you know, it's like, oh, cool. I appreciate that, you know? And uh, it just all starts to connect, you know? It's like, I'm talking to someone, oh, you know, they're like, well, I want to talk to you, but I don't really want to, you know, go into that non duality thing. Like, well, well, now I offer empowerment based life coaching. We can talk dualistically and still get, you know, a good chunk of that benefit um, in a way that might not be frustrating for you. Instead of trying to seek enlightenment, maybe you're just uh, trying to figure out how to, you know, feel better and how to feel more empowered or, or less anxious or how to how to have your limiting beliefs deconstructed, similar to cognitive behavioral therapy in a way, you know, but cognitive behavioral therapy costs thousands of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, right. and you know, I have a, I have a degree in psychology. I have a degree in philosophy. I had uh, a concentration in behavioral neuroscience. So in a way, uh, there's this uh, shamanic tendency, right? As I've said, I, there's an energetic component here that can be transmitted and spooky things happen non-locally if you tune into it. <laughs> and there's oh. a shamanic side, you know, of, of trying to, to heal, which again is the recovering rescuer in me, which is kind of dualistic and it's fine. Okay, it's fine. I'm a little helper and it's a sickness. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> and there's well, non-duality yeah. for those that are, you know, desperately seeking to end the suffering and to awaken. Right, right. So you still believe that there is a world where, I mean, and, and this is where I, I, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with personal development and transformation because a lot of people would say, oh, well, are, are, be passionate about something and then pursue that. Um, and you're not saying, hey, look, t- don't follow your, I mean, yeah, what about this notion? What I'm saying follow is follow your dreams. Do it, yeah. Well, maybe not your dreams, but follow whatever resonates with you naturally and instinctually on a gut level, energetically, when detecting the subtlety. In other words, Mm. think about it in terms of energy and whatever resonates with you, like if it feels good and it feels right, then you should follow that. You shouldn't necessarily follow your preconceived, contrived, seeking notions of what would make you happy. Well, if I was a rock star... So maybe I'll do music, like not necessarily. Right. Uh, and if you're like, you know, it doesn't, you know, and you're forcing yourself to do that because you think that's the thing you want and that's the big thing you identify with. It's not really necessarily true, right? Like, but if you go to some soul crushing job and you, you hate it, you make lots of money, you're still not going to be happy. So you need something in between. I think uh, in general, people are happiest when they're creating something, something uniquely of them. You know, like even something as uh, as simple as making websites, even though it's some technical, dualistic, ordinary thing, it's like it's not that I'm like geeking out about it. Like I'm not I'm not like all about it. Uh, like I'm not one of those computer guys. Like oh, you, oh, it's a new hard drive I got. Like I'm not like that. You know, I yeah. care less. I'm more of an artist or a creative. But the um, creating anything is inherently satisfying because we are all secretly the creator. <laughs> <laughs> right. So when right. you are a co-creator, 
generating your, your own thing in your own way, uh, it feels better. That's why entrepreneurs and digital nomads and things like that are such a big deal right now is because it feels good. And you should do whatever feels good. If murdering people with an ax feels good, do it. <laughs> if no feeding way. orphans feels good, do it. You know what I mean? No. If it really resonates with you, why would it, what would it, why would anything stop you? Yeah. No, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm thinking of the news report that goes, I listened to the open loops pod. This person listened to open loops and yeah, let's episode... put a legal disclaimer on here. <laughs> Just kidding. But you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yes, yes, the, yes. The, the, the mind needs to hear something shocking to be snapped out of its contrived unnatural patterns. And so that's one of the, the roles of the sage is to shock the seeker and the seeker usually will become addicted to the shock and keep coming back to be shocked out of those limiting patterns. Even though they're held to be the most dear things in the life of the seeker, my identifications, those are the hangups. And those are what people freak out about. And if you challenge someone's beliefs, they'll nail you to a cross and set it on fire. You know, that's what happened to Jesus, Socrates. They were awake. <laughs> yeah. So, so what okay. it, how do we protect you? Oh, I don't need protecting. Oh, <laughs> but uh, I don't you're... need armor. I don't need, you know, one day they'll take a windowless van and abduct me and torture me and kill me and put it on YouTube. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're okay. <laughs> With that. that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Kirschbaum, the non-duality speaker. Uh, definitely check him out. Sign up for one of those talks. I'm telling you, I am just blissful right now. This feels amazing. I'm kind of shocked at how much is transferring through. Literally that. shocked. I, I don't even understand. I'm going, why am I? There's no drugs in my system. I have not, I have not dr had anything to drink, and yet I am so high right now. What is that? <laughs> Blissed out, yeah. Yeah, so cool. Hey, look, I, I'm grateful you came on. Thank you so much, Andrew. I'm Please, grateful. I hope Thank to have you, you come back again. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Very Appreciate nice. It.